Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first press conference for the Copa America 2024. In the main table is the head coach for um, Canada, Jace March, and the player, Alfonso Davis. Remember that to make questions, they need to uh, raise the hand. And also, please do not be recorded and any photos. So please don't uh, put uh, out the the phones, okay? So we begin in here, we can uh, raise the hands. Buenos días, de Augusto Raquijar de Canal 12 Chubut y FM del Viento para el técnico March. ¿Qué esperan de Argentina? Eh, imaginando un partido distinto a lo habitual que juega la selección, eh, ¿esperan un partido u otro en base a esas variantes que se hablan que el equipo... Reitero. Buenos También. días. También. Ahí está, gracias. Le preguntaba qué partido espera de que haga Argentina, pensando en qué sentido, eh, preparando el partido ante Canadá. Y si las variantes que se manejan por estas horas, usted las está mirando y prepara un partido de cara a una Argentina con Di María, con Nico González, o en el medio campo, si es lo mismo Paredes, o por ejemplo Enzo Fernández. Gracias. Um, yeah, so, um, listen, we, we have such a high level of respect for the team. Um, we obviously know the quality of their players. We've done a lot of preparation individually, but our players obviously know a lot of, of the qualities of their players. Um, and, and now we've just tried to educate what it looks like as a team and then to make sure that we understand what our what our approach is, what our tactics are, and what our match plan is. Um, in terms of what to get out of the midfield, you're right when you say that they've used a lot of different midfield combinations. Um, we're prepared uh, for for all of the different options, but clearly it's a little different if, if Di Maria plays than Lo Celso and, and how they use McAllister. And so so there are some, some nuances there that we will have to make adjustments right before match time. But our team is aware of the qualities of their, their team, uh, their midfield, their entire team, their strengths. And, and we know we're in for a really tough match, but we're really excited for the challenge. Hi, uh, maybe a question for, for both of you. Um, we know Argentina are world champs, Copa America champs. Uh, on paper, they're a scary team, but we also saw at the World Cup that they're not invincible, losing to uh, to Saudi Arabia. Is that a situation that you see as a maybe a blueprint of what you guys can do or something as a motivation or confidence factor in, in, in any way? Go ahead, Fadi. Yeah, like you said, uh, you know, Argentina is, uh, you know, the best team in the world and uh, I was playing this game against them. It's going to be, you know, a battle. Um, you know, you're playing against a team with a high quality, you know, a lot of quality and, and you know, a lot of uh, organization. I think we prepared well uh, for this game. Um, and uh, our mindset is strong. Uh, we're going out there playing against, you know, the World Cup champions. And uh, that's that's motivation for us. And obviously just to win this game and and, and try to move on. Alfonso, let's right here. How, how how have you noticed this past week being different from the European trip? Getting to know Jesse, getting to know his demands. This week, certainly training in the heat, but getting ready for the opening of a tournament. How have you noticed maybe a change in the players' mentality, knowing that now the games are going to start to matter? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, when he first came in, you know, he had a a game plan for us. Um, in 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 Europe, you know, he tries to execute it. You know, the first game against Netherlands didn't go so well. Um, but against France, I think we we're starting to learn more and more about his his tactics. And yeah, I mean, we know this is a competition, and we want to win it. And uh, is it going to be is it going to be difficult? Definitely. But uh, I think all the boys are ready. We're all invested in what he's telling us, and uh, we're ready to go. Jesse, how have you noticed from your perspective their mentality has changed from last week in Europe to now? Yeah, I think the training sessions have been harder. Um, we've been together more, so we've been able to, you know, we, we kind of had to put everything together quickly before the Dutch match with some MLS players arriving late. Um, and there were so many new themes and topics, uh, tactical and, and leadership 
but I think uh, they responded really well, like Fonzie said, and and they're eager to to try to learn what we're going to be doing as we move forward, and and their ability to execute grew within the time we've been together. Here we've pushed the fitness, we've pushed the mentality, we've pushed the level of training, uh, because we know that that's what it will require for for a tournament setting like this. And and to also include the fact that we're playing three South American teams that that we know are experienced, that we know are savvy, that we know are are difficult to play against, are physical. Um, so, you know, I think our mindset has been to make sure that in all ways we want to be prepared for what these opponents will will uh, provide and and challenge and and then you know when again looking at argentina if i just build on what your question is i i think argentina will have learned from the mistake they made in qatar against saudi arabia and we are expecting nothing but the absolute best from their team so um we'd be foolish to to not prepare that way i think from sports and radio i will make the question in spanish you can put the okay. Your English is good though. La selección argentina tiene en Messi uno de sus principales valores. Quería preguntarle si va a tener alguna contemplación especial, algún formato de alguna técnica o táctica especial para para contener a Lionel Messi, el capitán de la Argentina. Y Alfonso le quería consultar si la presencia de Daría por tu banda te podría condicionar para ir al ataque. Gracias. Okay, I'll start. Um, yeah, I think the challenge with Messi is not just his quality, but his ability to f kind of move around in the game. And he doesn't just show up in the same places all the time. His, he's very clever about coming underneath at times, about how he moves off the back line. Obviously, anytime he gets on the ball, the way that he can start to create combinations and, and really provide confidence and pause and, and quality for, for the team is very unique, right? Probably this is what makes him the best player to ever play the game. Uh, so there are clear things we need to address with him. Uh, but the, the key I think is to really be, um, always aware of, of where he is and make sure that he's not in open space and that we're able to close, close space and, and try to make it difficult on him. Um, you know, I've played against him, uh, coached against him a few times and had some successes, but he's always finds ways to make a difference because his quality is so amazing. So that'll be the challenge for us. I think the guys are, are prepared and excited for it, but we know that uh, it will be very difficult. Yeah, for me, uh, Di Maria obviously is a world-class player. You know, I played against him uh, when he played with with uh, Paris and uh yeah, I mean, it's going to be difficult to stop him. You know, um, if you give him time and space, you know, he create things. But uh, overall, we know that they hit not just him, you know, throughout the whole team, they have dangerous, dangerous uh, players as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're going to defend well as a team and uh, definitely try to win our 1v1 battles for sure. Uh, only uh, when you put the, the microphone, please put it very well in the mouth because the translation needs to listen very well the question. So please help me with that. A little bit. Yeah. Hey Jesse, uh, the only uh, the only real change between the France and the, the Netherlands game was who you had in net. Uh, who starts in goal for you tomorrow? Um, I'm not revealing that right now. Where are you at with your goalkeepers right now? Yeah, I think both have done well in camp, and and I think they're they're uh, they have a really good relationship. They're going to be very competitive with each other, um, and I'm I, I'm happy with both of them. But uh, I'm not going to reveal that decision right now. Jesse, Argentina have lost the two games in the past five years. Obviously, it's a very difficult challenge. But the last team to beat them was Uruguay with Bielsa, who has obviously got connections to your career. When you watch that game back, what did you think? What did Uruguay do really well in that game that you can maybe see as a blueprint? Well, what they did well was the, the Bielsa football, which is man marking, making it very difficult on the on the key players. For, for Argentina, and then they spread the field a lot uh, and, and challenged uh, Argentina to deal with their athleticism and their ball movement. So uh, Bielsa has a very specific way of playing that, that is different than mine, but um, certainly uh, understanding how to, to be aggressive in duels, 
how to uh, not back down to, to their high quality players and their physicality will be important for us. And so we're still a young team and a developing team in that way. But I've challenged our group to, to understand what this game will be like and what it will require. And we'll, it will be very difficult for us, no doubt on that. On, maybe even more than a football and tactical perspective is the experience and the physicality of what the match will be. But, but this is, uh, I think, good for us. And it's a good way for us to understand what the highest standard of the game is like. And, and, and again, when you look at the Dutch and the French games in the lead up to that, we've now been in two matches together where, where the, the level of play and the attention to detail is at the highest level. And, and so, um, it's it's an exciting challenge for us. It's a big challenge for us, but it'll help us it'll help us grow, and and I think we'll be up for it. And Alfonso, can you just put into words what it means to you to lead this team in a major tournament? Now you're the full time captain. Yeah, I mean it's a great honor. You know, I thank Jesse for putting the trust in me, and uh, you know, and also the trust the guys that have trusted me to lead this team. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to to wear the armband armband uh, for this for this country. And, you know, it's something you dream about as a kid. Uh, you know, I have my former captain over there at Tiba. You know, I'm definitely going to go to him for some, you know, advice. Uh, he's been captain for a national team for quite a long time. And, uh, yeah, just uh, being able to play with him and, 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 and be around him, you know, doing camps, you know, I've learned a lot from him for sure. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Herman Carrera para Hola Vip in Spanish. Yeah. ¿Cuál es su opinión sobre Lionel Scaloni? In terms of what do you eh, sí, en general eh, cómo es eh, para usted enfrentar al técnico campeón del mundo? ¿Qué, qué considera sobre Scaloni, el técnico que tiene que enfrentar? Yeah, clearly um, his understanding of how to get the best out of his team, right? And, and in years where everyone in the country, I think, wanted Messi to win titles, to, to show that he's the best player to ever play the game, he found a system and a, a, a mentality to get the best out of uh, Messi as well as his teammates. And so I think that he deserves so much credit for you know, how to get that balance right, how to, to challenge the group to understand their roles, but also to, to all feed into how they could play into Messi's strengths. And that balance, I think, ha has won them tournaments and, and gotten Messi to, to, be, to be what he is internationally. I mean, we all have known that from a club perspective that, that he's always been the best in the world. But for Messi's legacy, I think it was really important to, to hold the World Cup, and, and he found a way to do that. Jesse, good morning. A question for you in Spanish, please. Okay. Diego Provenzano, del Diario Clarín, de Argentina. Eh, hemos leído mucho sobre tu historia reciente eh, en ascenso durante esos, estos últimos años, pero también leímos que se te criticó mucho por las frases que colocabas en tu paso por el Leeds y por el Leipzig. Quería saber, sin que escuche a Alfonso y como si no hubiera nadie en esta sala, ¿Qué frase tenés en mente para, para decirle a, al plantel en la previa a un debut de Copa América contra la Argentina campeona? Um, yeah, I, I would describe it differently than way, the way you've described it. Uh, but in general, we, 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 we are addressing Argentina. Right. And we know how good they are, but where we are in our process, it's, as, it's more about us. Right. And so I'm focused, I'm having the team focus on what we think is important, how to continue our development path, how to stick to the things that we think are going to make us good. And we still feel like if we can do that in the match, that we can be successful. And we know it's the biggest challenge that we could be presented with uh, at the start of a big tournament, but I'm confident in our team. I'm confident in the process we created. And I believe that we will uh, have a very good match and that the players will go after the game in every way. So that's, Listen, that confidence and self-belief has to always be there with our with our team and, and we'll be ready. Yes. For the coach. For the coach, uh, we talk a lot about Messi, but which is the strength, apart from Messi, which is the strength of 
Argentina and for uh, for the player for Davis uh, Alfonso Davis. Sorry if it's uh, a bit out of context, but I come from Spain. Uh, what can you? I know you are concentrated in Canada, but what can you say about uh, the rumors link you with Real Madrid? Because people in in Spain are talking a lot about you. Thank you very much for both. Yeah, I mean, look, we we know that that Argentina will be ready. We know that they're a good team. We'll be ready for them. We're excited for the match. Yeah, for me, I think my main focus right now is uh, with my national team um, to play football in this tournament. You know, to help my team uh, go far. And yeah, as of now, that's where my head's at. Um, you know, I'll think about it when when uh, when we're when we're past this tournament. Jesse, you've uh, you've been asked a lot about Argentina. Uh, a lot of Canadians are going to be watching this team probably for the first time since the World Cup. What kind of team do you want them to see tomorrow? Yeah, I think an organized and disciplined team will be important. Uh, we've talked a lot about that. Um, and then an aggressive team, you know, a team that plays fearless, a team that goes after the game, even at moments when we know that Argentina will possess the ball and the and they'll bring the crowd in into the to the match uh that will still be uh really organized that will stay strong that will still have a will still be aggressive at the right moments we won't give Argentina a, a ton of space we'll try to be compact and and then you know in our moments we'll show our quality on the ball and we'll certainly try to be dynamic in transition moments and we think that that can play to our strengths so uh, it's a big challenge, uh, but again, we're excited. You know, we, we don't look at this as, as how good Argentina is. We look at it as an opportunity for us to grow, for us to be better and for us to prove to ourselves how good we can be. Alfonso, uh, following on KJ's question, as captain, how will you change? Uh, are you the type of guy that will give pregame speeches, halftime speeches? Do you intend to be more vocal on the pitch? Or will you just be yourself and lead by example? And maybe after you're done, Jesse, in giving him this role, what are your expectations for him in changing? Do you want him to be different and how? For me, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I'll need to change, uh, change anything. I think me being myself is, uh, you know, is good enough, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give some speeches, but uh, overall, I'm just gonna, you know, go out there and 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 play 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 the game I know how to play and and you know help uh, help the team and definitely, um, you know, contribute to you know uh, the team winnings. Yeah, I, I think. Look, what what we did first is we talked with the leadership council, and then we talked about Fonzie being the captain, and then I didn't say anything. The guys spoke. And they all said to him, you don't have to change. You have to be, be yourself, right? And I think he expressed that. But what I've seen since I've gotten to know Fonzie is a guy that cares a lot for the national team, a guy that wants to take on a bigger role, um, someone who trains hard and leads by example, um, that enjoys being around the team, but is also challenging the group to grow and, and improve and get better. And so he's one of our youngest players on the, in the squad, but I think he's also equipped with a lot of the qualities to be one of the biggest leaders and the most important player, certainly when we get to 2026 and the most important person in the team. We don't expect him to get everything perfect right now. And, and by the way, captains don't have to get everything perfect all the time anyway, but for sure, I think that he will have a platform and the support and an opportunity to grow within the role and continue to become everything that we know that he will become. And that's what we're entirely focused on. Hi, Jesse. I'm here. Okay. Um, how did the friends game inform your 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 lineup? Uh, and do, do do we expect to see pretty much the same lineup from the friends game tomorrow? Look, we uh, again we're 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 in this two phase process. The on one phase is totally focused on ourselves and and the development of the team and the pathway that we're trying to create to be the best that we think we can become. But in the other sense, we always have to address the opponents and what they present to us. And certainly, when you talk about the opponent of Argentina, we have to really be thinking carefully about what will what in, within our framework, within our identity, will be necessary for us to be successful on the day. And that will if we can. Be successful on the day, 
no matter the result, that will ultimately help our overall process. But, and, and, and again, I think if we stick to that, um, then, then we give our best chance of success. So there won't be, if there are changes, there won't be a lot because I think that that group has, has, uh, grown already together. Um, and the key will be that we also get good performances from the bench as well. After the friends game, the guys had three days off, uh, you, which you said you were not happy about. Uh, did you get enough time to to have them fit enough for for the Copa America? We pushed them really hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you know, I mean, given the conditions, the weather conditions, and the demands of what these games are, we knew that it was vital that we were at top fitness, and I believe we've pushed them in a way that we've gotten them there, and they've recovered. We've gone through a lot of tactical and 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 conceptual. Um, con uh, con uh, principles as well, so that I think that they'll be prepared. Um, yeah, and we're excited. We're excited. Jesse, right over here. Jesse, right back here. Okay, sorry. Um, Alfon there's a lot of known commodities on this team. You're not going to reveal your starting 11, but there is a chance that there's going to be three or four guys who are going to be making their you know, major tournament debuts. What are you, how are you going to be evaluating them? If everything is pointed towards 2026, what do you want to see out of those players who are going to be taking a stage like this for the first time? Yeah, mostly just the clarity. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's a big opponent. It's a big tournament. We know all the all, but these guys are all pros. You know, they've been through uh, big situations, and and now they've also they're off the back of playing two big opponents, and so of course there will be certain things that that will be presented in this match that are different. But in the end, I want to see a team that that is fearless, that believes in themselves, that trust each other on the pitch, that are clear with the, the tactical model and the, and the roles that we're trying to create for them. And if they can do that and trust that and believe in it, then they will be able to execute better and then they will perform better. And then overall, we give ourselves a better chance at a result. Alfonso over here. When you reflect on your, your personal journey, Alfonso, uh, coming from overseas to Canada, what's going to be going through your mind when you lead out the nation tomorrow in this tournament? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, as you guys all know, I came to Canada when I was five. Um, you know, they took me in, they made me one of their own, and yeah, I, I, I love this country. Um, I think before the game, obviously, it's going to be a lot of emotions, you know, um, leading out the team against our opponent like Argentina is going to be big, and being able to wear the armband, um, you know, for the first official time um, in my career would be something spectacular. But for me, when I step on the pitch, I mean, I just, you know, we we, we cue into um, the coach's uh, tactics, his lesson. He, he he told us uh, what to do before the game. But overall, for me, I just, you know, go out there, play my game, and and uh, and, and try to win the game, I guess. This was the last question. Um, Jesse, a lot of focus has been on the def defensive side, the press, the high line. Um, what are some things you maybe want to see on the offensive side of the game and things you maybe learned as a reference point from playing the French and the, and the Dutch the last week? Yeah, I think actually in both matches, we had some really good moments of possession. And, and you know, we're kind of, uh, the it's not a full departure what we're trying to do with the ball from some of the things that have been done here in the past and the foundation that's been laid. So that transition, I think, into what we want to develop as we move forward has been relatively smooth. Um, certainly, we're trying to be more uh, aggressive and effective in transition moments uh, against the French in the second half specifically. If we could have been a little bit sharper in a couple moments, maybe we could have found a way to get the lead and maybe a goal and, and maybe get a win. Um, but I, I, I know that the offensive quality that we have on the pitch and the dynamic uh, players that we have mean that we will score enough goals. So I think in everything, it's about the structure and the connection of what we're trying to do and then the understanding of how to execute it at a high level. And and that's where I think that, again, the these opponents have been uh, challenging for me um, uh, in terms of how to create a standard for for what's necessary for us in our in our pathway, but also for the players to execute. But I'll tell you, just based on the first two matches, it was much, much better than I than I could have hoped going into that process. So now where we are now, I think we're stronger for that. I think there's a high level of belief. And now we have a chance to, to at a, at a big test once more to see how we hold up and can we execute. And and I believe that we'll have a good match tomorrow. And I believe that we'll have a good start and that the, the team will show confidence in an incredibly difficult situation. Good.
That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.